Welcome, I'm Anna Escolano Molto and I'm going to present you my final thesis project and it is called Mediterranean Seagrasses as Carbon Sinks, the Regional and Methodological Differences. This thesis has been supervised by Susanna Fletcher and Iris Hendricks. The Mediterranean Sea has been defined as a hotspot for climate change. And why is it defined in those terms? Well, uh, in this region, there are highest warming rates together with higher surface CO2 compared to global oceans. In the left graph, you can see how the atmospheric CO2 concentration has been increasing since the Industrial Revolution. About one third of these CO2 emissions is absorbed by the sea, which after several chemical reactions in the seawater, gives a higher concentration of hydrogen ions with which leads to a decrease in the pH, resulting in the ocean acidification. This process affects negatively the marine life, notably for calcifying organisms. But we have some climate change mitigation natural allies. Some of them are the sea grasses that, through, that act as carbon sinks, absorbing part of these carbon dioxide emissions through a process known as blue carbon. In this study, we have analyzed two endemic Mediterranean species, Posidonia oceanica and Thymodocea dosa. So, after having explained all that, the aims of the study were to compare the seagrass metabolism assessment methodologies, to compare regional metabolism differences, and to assess the carbon burial capacity of those seagrass species. You may ask yourself, how can seagrass metabolism be estimated? It can be estimated through different metabolic parameters, such as the gross primary production, the net community production, and the community respiration. The net community production is defined as the difference between the gross primary production and the community respiration. When a seagrass community is autotroph, it tends to, to act as a carbon sink. That means in metabolic parameter terms that when net community production is positive or when gross primary production exceeds 186 millimol of oxygen per meter square per day, those seagrass communities act as carbon sinks. In this slide, you can see the two main classical methodologies used to assess the seagrass metabolism. Here you have the multiparametric probes with which you can measure the salinity, the temperature, the oxygen, and the depth. And in the right side, you can see the vented chambers with which you can assess the difference in oxygen production. So, how we get all those metabolic parameters? We did a data compilation with data from our vented chambers and sensors together with data compilated from a bibliographic revision for those two methodologies. For the gross primary production, net community production, and community respiration parameters, we had to do several calculations through a model that was used by a MATLAB routine that included different parameters such as temperature, dissolved oxygen, percent saturation, salinity, depth, latitude, longitude, wind speed, and mixed layer depth. As we didn't have the CTD profiles, we had to calculate the mixed layer depth value by other models. In the left part, you can see some of the whoop, some of the equations used to calculate this value. After getting all the metabolic parameters, we analyze them by different statistics tests, such as the ANOVA, linear regression model, and Tukis test. Here, you can see some of the references used to extract all the Thymodocea and Posidonia uh, Oceanica metabolism values, both for benthic chambers and sensor methodologies. We compilated as well abiotic factors the, through different seasons and in different sampling locations in, in the eastern and the western Mediterranean basin. In those maps, you can see the sampling locations for our data and for the compilated data. As you see, we covered the eastern and the western Mediterranean basin. So, what we found? We first of all looked at 
the existing or non-existing differences between the two methodologies. The first remark that we did was that the gross primary production values together with the net community production ones were higher in sensors compared to the benthic chamber ones. This may be due to a benthic chamber underestimation. And we have different hypotheses that could explain this. One of them is a nutrient limitation due to the non-exchange with the water column. This may happen when benthic chamber measurements are made in a, longer peri in a period longer than a day. It also may be due to the PVC ring that could have damaged the roots of the seagrasses and therefore affecting their physiology. The third hypothesis that we had is that in benthic chambers there is a higher CO2 exudation with, with gross primary production values lower than the benthic than the sensor one as a consequence. We therefore we, we found significant differences between benthic chambers and multiparametric probes and therefore separated our analysis by methodologies. So first for multiparametric probes we didn't find significant differences between species. So that illustrates that the multiparametric probes assess the metabolism at an ecosystem level. This may be due to the effect of the lateral advection together, to, uh, together with the mixing water column. We therefore combined the analysis of Posidonia Ocea Oceanica and Thymodoceano dosa data. We looked if there were differences between the eastern and the western Mediterranean basin, and we did found significant differences for gross primary production and community respiration. So we separated our analysis by regions. We looked if there, if there were trends between the seasons and the metabolic parameters, and we did found a visual trend. However, we didn't, we didn't found significant results but this might, may, may have been due to the fact that there was a bias in the data caused by the higher amount of data during spring and summer. This seasonal trend is reflected as well in this graph you, where you can see the temperature related to the metabolic parameters, but again, we didn't find significant results that may be due to the higher amount of, observ of observations during spring and summer. We looked at other abiotic fa pa uh, param factors in the Western Mediterranean basin and how they were related to the metabolic parameters. We found that gross primary production was related to the depth, which was expected due to the effect of the light penetration. And we found as well a, a relation between the net community production and the wind speed, which also was expected due to the air sea exchange. In terms of carbon boreal capacity, we found seagrass communities that were autotroph and heterotroph. About 40% of the gross primary production values in the eastern Mediterranean basin were about 186 millimol of oxygen per meter square per day, meaning that they were acting as carbon sinks. For the Western Basin, this percentage is even higher, with 75.8% of the gross primary pr mm, production values exceeding this value. Nevertheless, we found negative net community production values in, those, in some of the sampling locations. And in all these sampling locations where those negative community production values that were found, those sampling locations were located by nearby a nutrient source. So let's talk about the benthic chambers. In the benthic, in the, in the benthic chambers, we found that the different that there were significant differences between Posidonia Oceanica and Simon Oceano Dosa, meaning that the benthic chambers assess the metabolism at a species level. We therefore separated our analysis by species. We looked as well at the regional differences between the eastern and the western Mediterranean basin for Posidonia Oceanica, and we did found significant differences for all the metabolic parameters. We looked as well at the seasonal trends for the eastern and, Medi and western Mediterranean basin for Posidonia Oceanica, 
And again, we saw vi the, those visual trends, but we didn't find significant results that could, may, uh, that could may be due to the fact that there was a higher amount of observation during summer. To conclude, we can say that benthic chambers assess the metabolism at a species level, with Posidonia oceanica being more productive than Timodoceano dosa, that in multiparametric proofs, the metabolism is assessed at an ecosystem level, and we have higher gross primary production values compared to the benthic chamber ones. And also, we found negative and positive net community production values for a same sampling site in different periods of the year that illustrates the capacity of those communities to switch from heterotrophy to autotrophy. This point stresses the importance of monitoring those seagrass communities with multiparametric proof through time in order to assess their health status. We also found patterns between met metabolism and temperature. Nevertheless, those two methodologies have common points, and those common points are the differences between the eastern and the western Mediterranean basin, a publication bias due to a higher number of observation in the western regions, together with a eleva more elevated number of observations during the summer, and also that Posidonia Oceanica and Thymodoceano dosa communities were net autotrophic in almost all the seasons and locations, and therefore were acting as carbon sinks, highlighting their key role as climate change mitigators. After having the results, we have some suggestions for further research, and those are a higher number of observations in the Easter Basin, a higher number of observations during all the seasons, especially in winter, and to evaluate the net community production values with water nutrient levels. Thank you very much for listening, and a special thank you to, uh, for my supervisors, Susana Fecha and Iris Hendricks. Do you have any questions? <laughs>